On the 24th of March, 1999, the news of the death of retired Major General Babatunde Abdulbaki Idiagbon rocked the nation. The man who was once the de facto vice president of Nigeria under the military government of Major General Muhammadu Buhari was dead. He was only 56 years old. Idiagbon died under very suspicious circumstances with many controversies surrounding his death. Many accounts of his death have been played, with many pointing accusing fingers at the government of General Abdul Salami Abubakar. Tunde Idiagbon, who was of Fulani ancestry, was born in Iloran, Kwara State, on September 14, 1943. A trained economist, he was a man who utilized the privileges of several offices he held to promote nation building and national development. He demonstrated absolute honesty, loyalty, and comradeship to the extent that over two decades after his death, no one has accused him of any form of moral or financial corruption. As Buhari's deputy, Tunde Idiagbon was a no-nonsense, never-smiling soldier and a disciplinarian. Regarded by many as the engine room, the brain box, and the star boy of Buhari's military government, he worked seamlessly with Buhari throughout and was given free hand to operate. That alluring working relationship saw him dominating the government so well that for the first and only time in the political history of Nigeria, the names of the head and his deputy were used to nomenclate the administration as the Buhari Idiagbon regime. While performing the Lesser Hajj in Saudi Arabia in 1985, as a guest of the King of Saudi Arabia, Idiagbon learnt about the Babangida led coup that overthrew his government. Despite pleadings from the Saudi king to stay back, he refused and took the next flight back to Nigeria. On arrival, he was placed under house arrest for three years, and after his release he retired to his hometown, Iloran, and lived a very quiet life. But what killed him? On the 30th of March, 1999, Professor Olurotimi Farkeya, the chief medical director of University of Iloran Teaching Hospital, disclosed that the medical diagnosis cannot be revealed without the permission of members of the deceased family. He, however, confirmed that he did not die of cholera, as was been speculated in some quarters. And when the members of Idiagbon's family were approached to speak on what killed the late general, none of them was willing to talk to the reporters. But the refusal on the part of the family to talk only helped to spark even more controversies about the death of their patriarch. A week before his death, Idiagbon was in Abuja to attend a meeting of senior army officers, retired and serving, summoned by the head of state, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, on how best to hand over power to the civilians. He returned to Iloran on the 19th of March, and he was fine until Tuesday, the 23rd of March, when he complained of a slight stomachache. But the pain only worsened. Around 10.30 p.m., he was rushed to the University of Iloran Teaching Hospital, where the medical director led five other medical consultants into an unsuccessful battle to save his life. Unsubstantiated claims of poisoning trailed his death. Some people believe the late general was poisoned during his last brief visit to Abuja, citing the following reasons. 1. Professor Farkeye had to seek the attention of the Kwara State Military Administrator before Idiagbon was admitted to the teaching hospital, the same hospital he had been using before the incident. They asked why he involved the governor in Idiagbon's private medical issue. 2. Idiagbon's medical file was reportedly removed from the hospital's records department by Farkeye. 3. The belief was that an order came from the presidency directing Farkeya to make the file vanish. Four prominent Nigerians, including Sunday Mbang, prelate of the Methodist Church of Nigeria, demanded an autopsy. It was never done. The professor denied all these allegations. Sadly, General Idiagbon was buried on Thursday, the 25th of March, 1999, at his residence in Iloran. The burial was swift. He was interred at about noon. His wife was clad in black and she wept profusely. In attendance were top government functionaries and some retired military officers, including General Muhammadu Buhari, who could not hold back his tears. Perhaps the most damning claim of government involvement in the death of Idiagbon was made by Femi Fani Kayode, Nigeria's former aviation minister. He said, General Tunde Idiagbon was to be appointed chief of staff in the presidency in President Obasanjo's government. He was invited to Abuja, offered the job, and he accepted it. He went back to his hotel the night he was made the offer, had some food and some Abuja tea, and he immediately fell gravely ill. He never recovered from that illness and he died from it. He was not suffering from any known illness before taking the tea. Up until that time he had enjoyed excellent health, 
and I was reliably informed that he was in very high spirits after leaving the presidential villa that night. As a matter of fact, Obasanjo was looking forward to working closely with him. The fact that the man died in such a mysterious way is yet another inexplicable tragedy in our history.